Hello, and welcome to an Iron Man Impossible first look at XCOM's new expansion pack, Enemy Within. I've only just got my hands on it, so it was going to be a little while before I was planning to make any proper videos for it. However, I've been recording anyway, and after a particularly fun mission, I saw a good opportunity to show off a little Enemy Within now, instead of making you guys wait. Because I would never make you guys wait. Anyway, let me settle some questions now before we start and say yes, I'm looking forward to doing an Iron Man Impossible campaign series for Enemy Within, and I'm also interested in making a little review of Enemy Within's new features. But I want to get more familiar with the expansion before I try either. So until then, you'll have to make do with this screening of Operation Severed Jester. Now the Operation happens to be a council mission, the first of the Operation Progeny series, titled Portent. A French military convoy has been ambushed by what seem to be human aggressors, and with a number of aliens also spotted in the area, it's up to us to get on the ground and find out what's happening. Now straight away you'll notice a big new addition, and that's our squad's mech trooper. After suffering critical wounds in the line of fire, support trooper Bubba Nitro volunteered to have her limbs amputated and replaced with sophisticated mechanical alternatives. Suited up in a combat exoskeleton, the mech brings heavy special weapons to the battlefield, as well as a class-specific perk depending on what class of trooper becomes that mech. In this case, a support who has become a mech provides a defense field that improves its allies' cover. While its size means it can't use cover itself, the mech's abilities are perfect for supporting its smaller allies. Which is good, because trust me, the aliens have not got any nicer. One Thin Man is dangerous. Four Thin Men is a walking cataclysm. With incredible accuracy, mobility, and toxic virility, trust me when I say I am not interested in dealing with these guys. With two down off the bat, things are looking sunnier, but that's still two plasma crits waiting to happen, so we're not taking any chances. A frag demolishes his cover, Eat this. and some bullets finish the job. There's only one French lawyer left, but his heavy cover is a considerable issue, which is where the mech's signature ability comes in. Collateral damage requires a full load of ammo and only hits for two, but it completely shreds any cover it targets, making Swiss cheese of this French man's air conditioner. Unfortunately, no matter how many abilities you use, you can never make a rookie hit, and Monsieur Thin Man seizes his chance to vault off the roof and vent on our mech. Luckily, he just remodels the warehouse instead of Bubba's face, which gives her a chance to duck into cover and reload while the squad prepares for a killing move. The thin man hangs low and overwatches, but Bubba strafes into position and blows his barrier away. One more for the trash can. Now by this point, you should already be realizing just how huge of an addition the mech is, and I'm not talking about their size. The ability to chew up cover on command without wasting explosives is absolutely massive. And with your other soldiers following it up, it's a repeatable solution to those nasty heavy cover scenarios. The downside, of course, is that despite its health, the mech is fragile. 12 hit points seems like a lot, but it goes down very quickly when you're sitting in the open. And as I've learned from painful experience, a pair of unlucky criticals can two-shot your mech about as fast as you can say nuts. And speaking of unlucky criticals, Thin Men! Objective updated. Now I was scared facing four Thin Men who were in front of me, but with these four catching me in an L-shaped ambush, I am positively terrified. So I scramble to whatever cover I can find and start hurling abuse at them. Also grenades. Frag out. I move Muffalo to the roof to try and safely throw my smoke, but XCOM's fantastic new explosive highlighting doesn't quite work with smoke and the cloud doesn't cover my heavy like I expect. So with even less options, it's time to get desperate. Our rookie Wookie falls back to the left flank, and our mech moves up into the right side breach. 
Its flamethrower can't help us this turn, but with automated threat assessment and its high health, the mech is the best candidate to draw fire. Assessment is a perk for the mech that grants it 15 extra defense whenever it's on overwatch. And on top of the mech's natural 10, it means Bubba is just able to slide through that plasma. That or just French thin men are very inaccurate. With the squad surviving the turn intact, it's time to count our lucky stars and start evening the odds. And in a situation like this, Mushy's bullet swarm makes all the difference. With the right flank solicitors expertly potshotted, it's time to move Bubba up for a nasty little trick. If collateral damage busts cover and the thin man's cover is a car, I'll let you figure out what's coming next. So yeah, collateral damage is still amazing. With one last French man intact on Overwatch, we hunker down and prepare to finish him off. He's moved a short distance, so we can expect him to be on Overwatch again. And if we let him take another turn, he'll move up and murder one of our troops. Someone needs to break that overwatch so we can take this guy down. And with her substantial armor, Bubba's the robo girl for the job. For a thin man, it's a weak hit and it clears the way for our rookie. But little does Wookie know he's about to learn another new XCOM feature. Yes, interestingly enough, the thin men poison clouds now explode from where their bodies land, meaning when this guy's body slumps forward from the wall, it brings the poison with him. Still, a little air freshener later, and it's nothing but a lesson learned. With all nearby threats neutralized, it's time to recover the nearby survivor, who seems to be quite a negative fellow. You might as well leave me here. <clears throat> I have nothing to say to you people. It looks like he's the only witness to survive this fight. And for all we know, he was one of the aggressors. We need to bring him in, whether he likes it or not. Yeah, I'm gonna guess his preference is not. Regardless, he's in our hands now, and we start to head back towards our awaiting extract. But before we can, the halos start dropping in. Commander, we're picking up new contacts moving into the AO. Now the Thin Men situations just get nastier and nastier, because this time we've got one stuck on our roof, and if he decides to drop down on us, he's going to catch us on a nasty flank. For that reason, we need to save as many shots as possible so we can use them for Overwatch. With the rooftop Thin Man capable of flanking us anyway, cover is fairly unimportant, so the rest of my squad moves up to get the best shots they can. Not good. Not good. Very good. Always bet on trash can. But with two misses, that leaves us with only our heavy and our mech to overwatch. But our rooftop Frenchman picks an unfortunate landing spot. With another successful disbarment, the squad locks, loads, and moves on. You'll notice it's technically possible for a medkit to heal a mech, but I prefer to imagine you can't, as I think it's a good counterbalance to how much health they have. I figure it's probably worth mentioning, so there aren't a bunch of comments saying, Why didn't you heal your mech? Anyway, as we move on, we... This is a waste of time. Look, sir, that's very rude. Our squad starts dashing for the heavy cover, and the aliens are none too happy about it. We've got hostiles on the move. <laughs> it's a sector in. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, okay. One less French man is always good, but we've still got them in front and behind us. So we get to cover and pray to God the extract's clear. Fuck you, God. Well, with another two thin men on our already thin left flank, we are in a very bad position. Bubba clears the overwatch in her usual heroic fashion, and the rest of the squad meets up behind the APC. But the Frenchies leave us zero time to regroup. 
As a sectoid barrels up to fire on us, a new enemy within Tweak shows itself off. The redone covering fire overwatch perk now fires before the enemy does. Of course, if you don't kill the enemy it doesn't really help much, but it's cool nonetheless. In our next turn, Bubba keeps up the charge and tries to push us towards the extract, and keeps dodging plasma in her trademark inexplicable fashion. Unfortunately, even with her move, the thin man's heavy cover keeps him safe from the flamethrower, so it's up to Limes to do what he does best. God oh, damn it, Limes, I didn't mean die. As a side effect, though, I learned that mechs can still panic which is not what I expect several tons of cyborg to do. Naturally, seeing this makes everybody else freak out. Luckily, nobody hits any shots they'd regret, and with the rest of the squad panicking, Mushy tries to hold her corner. Unfortunately, a different enemy draws the overwatch, and the closest thin man moves to flank city. It goes without saying we are in a very bad position. But Bubba Nitro makes up for her panic with another turn of pacemaker pumping heroism. Bubba Nitro is the luckiest robot ever. Unlike this thin man, who's about to become a french fry. With the flank threat reduced to a burning baguette, I do some impromptu healing and keep holding off the attackers. But the french men have other ideas. Yep, Bubba's out again. With our on-again, off-again mech in a panic and plasma landing all around us, things are looking very dire. So it's time for a last-ditch action. Our covering fire support moves to overwatch the sectoid, while our brave Rookie Wookie makes a desperate charge. The flashbang is a fantastic new grenade that cripples the accuracy and movement of its target, and it cancels both suppression and overwatch allowing our heavy to move up for an easy kill. Alright, maybe not an easy kill. We've lost the VIP, Commander. This guy was our only lead into what happened here. We're not getting any intel out of him now. No, I'd say getting intel out of his corpse is gonna be rather difficult. The VIP's dead, our heavy's flapping in the wind, and with the covering fire wasted on the wrong target, Wookie's caught in the open as well. With only Muffalo and Bubba left and enemies between them and the LZ, it's not looking good for our survivors. But when she's not panicking, Bubba is still three tons of robot hero, and she starts pushing towards the Sky Ranger to clear a path. It seems like she's destined to be blown to pieces, but in what can only be described as perfect luck, both the Thin Men need to reload on the same turn. And it's the perfect luck we need to turn this thing around. A quick serving of Swiss cheese French man later, and Muff dodges fire to try and rescue her squad mate. It's a painful hit, but she's still breathing, and with the other thin man content to simply overwatch, she reaches Mushy in time. Now from this point on, two strange things are happening. For one, all the aliens sit still on overwatch, and for two, I can tell where both the thin men are without actually being able to see them. I'm going to explain this to myself by saying the Thin Men are really scared and sitting still, and they're also loudly yelling to each other. I'm overwatching! Me too! It's the classic cowardice we need to take these French men down, and Muffalo moves in for an easy flank. Terry? I'm overwatching again! Now before we can deal with the last Thin Man, we have to root out that rooftop sectoid. We know he's low on health, so a nice collateral damage should do the trick. But in a gross tactical blunder, we ignore the oldest tactical trap in the book. The Tactical Ladder Overwatch. As Bubba finally succumbs to overwhelming wounds and mechanical failure, all Muffalo can do is move in and take vengeance. With only one French man left on the map, Muffalo's still got a hard job ahead. Getting in any kind of long-range firefight with him 
is likely to just result in us getting pot shotted. So the only option I'll consider is getting up close and personal. But with a max damage crit being our only chance to take this guy down, it's time to roll the hard six. <laughs> So ends Operation Severed Jester, as a lone, battered, bleeding trooper staggers off the ramp to tell the tale. The mission is a failure, but an excellent example of mechs and soldiers working together in a horrific situation, and a clear reminder that VIPs don't like plasma. The new mechs are very interesting tools to have in the XCOM arsenal. Their strong support abilities, coupled with their need for careful positioning, make them like a light tank or an IFV. Perfect for supporting a squad without being tanky enough to simply steamroll through the map. With a whole tree of perks to learn about, I'm still not sure whether they'll become broken in the late game, but for now, I'm pleasantly surprised to say they seem pretty balanced. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this quick look at Porton, and if you did, tune in next time when we'll take a similar look at a fun-filled trip to Newfoundland. Until then, bon voyage and have a good one.